Hey everybody, Mikey Warren back at the Academy of Martial Studies. Today we're working on our Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, so I've got appropriate purple on today. And uh, what we're going to work on and focus heavily on is how to fall without getting hurt. So we're going to start with our ground drills and warm ups, a lot of shrimping, because of course shrimping is life in Jiu Jitsu. Being able to move your hips appropriately and most importantly efficiently into or out of situations helps you to escape or to finish off an opponent. Uh, you'll see us doing some shoulder rolls back and forth. It may be a little tedious, so it may not be that dynamic or exciting a video this morning, but this is something that's critical to learn how to move around an opponent while you're being thrown, whether it's a hip toss, shoulder throw, any of the myriad of throws that you'll find in Judo and Jiu Jitsu and Hop Keto and a bunch of other arts that involve slamming people into the earth. Uh, it's quite effective hitting someone with a planet, especially if you do it right. So if we learn how to roll and absorb the impact, it lessens the damage done and allows us to train safely without risk of severe injury or just beating the hell out of the body. So with that, we're gonna go through a couple of our basic warm-up stretches. I'm gonna introduce a new device that's perfect for stretching simple strap show you how that works and gets the hamstrings and lower back pain issues and stuff and addresses those and basically we're gonna have some fun after that we're looking at teaching the basic three clinches that are used in the modern army combatives program in order to have some of our students that are working on it test out for the level one that's a crazy drill that they put together called the clinch drill where a bunch of the advanced senior guys get to come in throw on their boxing gloves and punch people that aren't allowed to hit them back uh, the idea behind it is to get people over the fear of getting hit to realize that they can get hit, they're not made of glass and they're, and they're not that fragile and it doesn't hurt that bad, and also to reinforce protecting of the face and chin while you're closing the distance with an opponent with the intent to grapple them or subdue them. So with that in mind, those three clinches are the three ways that you can finish the striker from starting at a distance and reset because you have to do that at least three times. So you have three different options. You can do like the same one over and over and over if that's where you find yourself or depending upon how your opponent's reacting, you may have to transition and change. And it's designed to be simulated with somebody with a ACH or Kevlar helmet on and to close up and just basically immobilize a person. So to start with, I've got this cool little strap. I've got it at a uh, CVS pharmacy. You can probably find it at a Walmart, online, the internet, wherever. And uh, this particular one's a Lifeline brand, but you know, I just, it's the appropriate strap. It's got loops in it at various intervals so that you can use each of those to help with some of your stretches. So I'm gonna, I've already done my uh, slow stretching this morning, so this is gonna be like a super fast forward demonstration, mostly so these guys, when they see it here, they can just grab it out of the bag and loosen up and stuff. But I'm gonna start with a simple hamstring stretch, put my foot through the loop, and I'm gonna bring it around my back and over my shoulder so that my right hand's gonna go into the loop have it behind me and I'm just gonna lay back so now I have this pulled nice and tight I straighten my knee so I get a lot of pressure going down and it stretches all along the back of the leg I can take pull it a little tighter bring it out to the side hold each of these positions for at least 30 seconds and work on both sides and turning it using shorter loops I'm able to actually stretch out the hamstrings I try to keep the hip on the mat and then stretch, pulling forward or north towards my head. It's a really nice stretch to do. You can work that on both sides of the body. Helps uh, lo loosen up the lower lumbar. And with that, we're gonna go ahead and get to warm up drills. Okay, right, guys, ready to start some shrimping? All right, so again, with the shrimping motion, we wanna make sure our hips come up off the ground that reduces the surface drag area that we have, so it makes it easier to move. If we are on the mat and my body just stays and scrapes, it's a lot of friction, especially if I'm dealing with an opponent and I'm trying to move around. Whereas if I take and plant opposite foot to the shoulder that I'll be putting my weight on, in this case, my right foot's down, I'm gonna put my weight on my left shoulder and lift my hips up, so I'm pivoting just on the ball and socket joint of my shoulder. So my leg does all the extra work, my shoulder just holds a body position, and my body is able to fold up just like that fried shrimp. I keep my hands down to simulate pushing down the knee just as if we're shrimping out from underneath someone's guard. Then I can come back. Left foot means I'm gonna go on the ball, the right shoulder, and I wanna bring my hips up and forward as much as possible. So that's what we're gonna do down and back a few times. Uh, 
If you have space at home, feel free to move along with us. All right, so we'll just start here and rock and roll it. Shrimps, crabs, lobsters, everything. Bring All everything to the game. Down, you're going into your left shoulder. That's it. Nice and easy. Take your time. There you go. Good push. All right, the next one is going to be a bit of a smoker. We're gonna work on shifting our weight from right side to left side. So we're gonna only go about halfway out and back because I don't wanna kill you guys first thing off, right? Especially doing this the first time. We're gonna keep our hands and feet in the air and we're essentially going to move laterally, sideways, just by twisting our trunk. Side shrimping is a uh, name for it. So from here, to the right, which is the direction I'm going. I plant my weight on my right shoulder. I twist my body. Each time I twist, I'm rolling the hips up, so I'm scooting to my right. When I want to go back to the left, reverse the direction. So what I'm using are my shoulders and my hips to swing and transition, body weight over. All right guys at home, this should be entertaining. It's our first attempt at this ever. <clears throat> okay, has to be a little bit of a pop. <laughs> yeah, you gotta get your whole body into it. Your hips have to work independent of your shoulders. <laughs> oh, that's a burn. Oh, yeah. Okay, just a little past the circle, then come on back. Go ahead and come on back from where you're at. <laughs> Get up. So, this weight transition is how we take initiative if we're going for, like, say, a pendulum sleep, if we're moving ourselves for a scissor sleep, if we want to start to initiate a roll and we want to come up dynamic. Jay over here will become more dynamic as he gets comfortable with this lateral motion. It's not something that you do normally, so adding this motion, getting comfortable with it, allows your mobility and gives you more options when you're in the ground fight or grappling. I see That's it. Burn I right can't, there. I can't figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's locked. Oh. So, incorporate your elbows a little bit to start. You can use your elbows, okay? So, you have to push off. Uh -huh. Pop your butt in the air and scoot it over to the left. So you're gonna, yes, kind of like that. And then you're gonna roll to your right shoulder, left, and pop. It's, you're starting Holy to get moly. it. That was one and a half. <laughs> Holy moly. Oh, this bad. works the abs like a champ, too, guys. It does. So, yeah. Here. That's it. Good. <laughs> Two more to get to the dot. That's it, you're getting there. Hey, that was better. Felt like your whole body got up? Yeah. Hey, right, now work your way backwards, the other way. So now it's gonna be to your left. Yeah. Oh, 
Almost, almost. Oh. You can incorporate those shoulders. That's it. Let's really work together as a team. Oh, and only that burns. Oh, yeah. Heck of burn on the abs. That'll help me do my sit ups. Indeed. Oh. And it works your lats. Comes out the midsection. Go to. Go to. Oh, on the back. Get the gear out. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Not. It. That's all right. It'll only be on the internet for millions of people to see. <laughs> you can't. What the good man? What's up, man? Welcome to the party, Mr. Uh, hey, that was good. Now you're getting it. Two more. Joseph. One more. Josh, straight out. Josh, straight out. Uh, uh, camera is live, guys. McQueen, especially. <laughs> Got Damon in Jiu-Jitsu. <laughs> Joe just showed up, everybody. We're getting ready to warm up and rock and roll it. <laughs> I think we just about killed Jay. Are you okay? <laughs> All right. So I'm going to demonstrate those two uh, drills real quick one more time, just so Damon gets a chance to see them, and you guys get to see a quick review before we kick off into our techniques, okay? So the first one's shrimping. I'm essentially moving my body to the side to allow my hips to escape and to give myself space to get away from an opponent to bring my legs into fight, to bring my knees into the fight, to bring my body away from a threat, or I use this to, to get around an opponent so I can make an attack. So we just see her shrimping down and back. The shoulder that you're going on, uh, that's gonna be on the bottom of that side of shrimp, the opposite leg is what carries the weight and plants. The idea is to try to get the weight from the back of your shoulder up to the top of the shoulder. So with that in mind, while I'm here, if I'm going into my left side, I've got my right foot. Again, I'm going to push up onto the top of my left shoulder, and I'm going to slide that bottom leg right alongside of the first pushing leg. All right, so see that in the other angle, same side again, right foot comes up to plant. This is where it carries my body weight. I push my weight north until I feel myself on top of my shoulder. I pivot on the ball and socket joint, and you saw how my legs came up in a straight line. The other one that we we're working was the laterals. So again, hands and feet are up, and I'm going to use a rocking motion and a little bit of a kipping motion with my hips in order to move sideways. This assists with the weight for scissor sweeps. So I'm coming up around to grab an arm bar. If I need to stitch my weight for a pendulum sweep, a lot of good dynamic motion comes from keeping that core nice and tight. Okay. And I'm certain someone as dynamic as Joe has probably seen those two drills done before. At the Olympic Training Center, Ronda Rousey. All day. So with that in mind, guys, let's get into the, the basics of our rolls. So our rolling is going to be done to help with our break fall. So at first, we're just going to roll freely, just down and back. Then we're going to roll and turn it into a slap fall. To start with, we're going to do an easy somersault. Just head over heels. So you see that from the side, everybody. Squatted down, hands touch the mat. I tuck my chin so I don't bust my head, and so it starts to curve my back. If you've ever fallen and hit the back of your rib cage and cause your diaphragm to spasm, <laughs> feels like you're gonna die, you can't breathe, until that muscle relaxes. It's because your body was straight, you got slammed, you probably held your breath, and you didn't learn how to break fall using the, your bottoms of your forearms to slap into the ground, make a broader area for impact, and absorb some of that throw. So the first somersault really easy. Kids do this, hands, chin tuck, and just roll. See that one swarm? Hands, chin tuck, roll. That's the first one we're gonna do. The second one is we're gonna turn into a shoulder roll. Essentially the same thing, but I'm going to angle my body and raise my arm. I want to imagine that there's somebody under this arm that's gonna tank it, yank it, and throw me off my feet. So my envisioning here, someone has me, and all of a sudden, oh yeah, I'm throwing myself now. All right, so to do that, I have a less dynamic rate. I'm gonna turn my palm out, and I'm gonna start my left shoulder going, so my left knee's up, and I'm gonna roll across my back until my right foot and right hip come to the ground. So it's actually kind of a diagonal, but I wanna to try to move in a straight line, tuck my chin, let me come up to work the right side. Right hand comes over, tucks the chin, right to left. 
right? When we work into break falls, we'll review those real quick, but those are the first two we're gonna do. So we're gonna do somersaults straight down, and we're gonna alternate shoulder rolls on the way back. So the way that's gonna look from behind, and I'll do it from the front, is then somersaulting all the way down, on the way back, left shoulder, switch my feet, right shoulder. So you see it coming back, somersault, left shoulder, and switch your feet, right shoulder. Hey, right, everyone, good. Got some real estate. Got them back. That's going. Hey, good. Thanks, so uh, I think I even met you or one of your other guys. our YouTube channels too, so you can catch up on some past classes. All right, so let's add some dynamics to this. Start with, I'm just gonna demonstrate a basic kneeling back fall. My chin's gonna tuck, so I keep my head from hitting into the ground. I'm going to bend one knee, just so add some curvature to the spine, and my hands are gonna start cross, just to get in the habit of bringing them down and beside me. So I'm not coming up like a crucifix, but my palms are gonna be down, I'm gonna hit right around this 45 degree range, just like a fighter jug, an F14 Tomcat for all the old heads. Now my palms are gonna be facing outward because if I hit on the concrete, I hit my knuckles, there's a good chance it could hurt. So I hit palms go out, and tuck, and bring it out. From the squatting position, chin's tucked, I'm gonna have one foot up, or the other. This foot is designed to catch someone in the midsection if they are charging you, so you can actually throw them over top of you. Sacrifice. Absolutely, a sacrifice throw and fall. If you've ever watched the old 80s He-Man series, this is He-Man's bread and butter. You get Skeletor all pissed off, he comes yeah! running across the screen, and every single time, He-Man just goes like the power's here, so it throws him. All right, so from the side, shin tuck. As always, notice when I'm getting up, I'm standing in base. Every time. Yep. So the way we're going to do this in motion is we're going to do the somersault. Come up. Start. Okay. We'll get to where we do this off of the jump in a moment, but I want to get you guys familiar with you can go forward, not die, and then just roll back. Okay. Questions? All right, down and back, guys. <clears throat> Ooh, tuck your chin, Damon. Right? No. <laughs> That's it. Good, Jay. Nice. Best part about break falls is they're self teaching tools. If you mess up, Mother Earth will let you know. Good. Just don't let your head slam. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> I keep missing. <laughs> That's why we practice. Uh, 
Good, good. Exhale, and you'll get it. It's just important so you don't get hurt. Someone pushes you, you know, like if you push me real quick. Just here, boom, I go. You pop back up. Oh, yes. There's okay. been a couple of times this has potentially saved my life. One of which is when I was a young sergeant, uh, still in, in the barracks, the 7th Special Forces group out in the old barracks in Fort Bragg. And somebody thought it'd be cute during one of the few times we got snow to take a bucket of hot water and pour it down the nine steps that we have on the outside of our barracks. So when I went running out to play in the snow with my Jeep, I took one step on said stairs, and next thing you know, I was in the air, about probably about six feet up, and I hit the bottom. Fortunately, I went all the way through and didn't fall on the stairs. Broke fall and popped up and was sliding on my feet, catching my balance in the ice before I knew what happened. So if you practice this enough, it becomes your instinctive way of falling. Most people, when they fall, they put their hands out. Ah! It's like, okay, so you're on your feet, maybe a pair of roller skates or something, you're already on the earth, and you're falling not very far. So when they reach out with their hands to try to stop the fall, it's when they end up breaking their wrist, mm -hmm. fracturing the radius mm -hmm. and ulna, which is radius, ulna, there's two forearm bones, or chipping something in the humerus or busting their head. So the idea here is patience. Patience is a big thing in jiu-jitsu. You don't want to jump right into something and go, ah, just to get it. Aggression is good when it's controlled aggression. You're not losing your cool. You're just moving dynamically. You're taking an opening that you see. But patience is the key to finding those openings. Just like a sniper, take John Hathcock. To go across a simple open field in Vietnam to take out one of the generals who was there to target, he spent four days moving an inch at a time. One inch at a time. Even the wildlife didn't notice is there. A deadly viper literally slithered right over top of his head and didn't realize it was over a person because it was that still. He controlled his breathing, he controlled his heart rate. The only time he could move was when there was wind blowing. Something that would move the grass, he'd move up an inch, and then you'd wait an hour. Okay, the wind's going again, I can move up an inch, mm. maybe two inches, with his rifle and everything for four days. Mm. He took his shot, and everybody would think the snipers would come from the jungled area, not the open, like mm. almost mowed field, right? So they went the wrong way and he was able to escape. Mm. He even got so good with his patience, he wore a white feather in his hat daring other snipers to find him. <laughs> He's the guy who actually had a sniper duel managed to change uh, angles as they were creeping to get the drop on each other. Saw the the guy's scope, aimed for it, and shot right shot, through. right Miracle shot, right through the scope, yeah, right through the guy's eye. Great. And that, yeah. that means the rifles are so lined up, you know that sniper was dialing in on him. Yeah. John got the shot first, because smooth is fast. So with that idea of patience and falling, be patient. I promise you, Joe and I will, can verify this. We've jumped out of lots of airplanes. We've never once got stuck in the air. We've always found planet Earth. Some of us a little faster than others when Joe's shoot failed, but Long he's still there. Yeah, the break fall, he's still here today. So with that in mind, don't be pay eager to get to the mat like that. Don't reach for it. Let your body move in a natural motion and roll into the ground as much as possible. So with this in mind, we're gonna take this forward roll and we're gonna take out the hands and the head part. We're literally gonna flip ourselves while squatting into this break fall. So to do that, I'm gonna tuck my chin. Now you're gonna to have to get a little bit of a pop over to get this, otherwise you'll just get stuck in your shoulders and we'll kind of give you a This is again a self-teaching tool. The more you do this, the smoother it becomes and your body type will learn exactly where your hands need to be to maximize that absorption. So this in mind, my arms are gonna cross, I'm gonna pop up and hit. Stagger your feet if you need to. That's it. Just slap, legs up. See it from behind. Now in this instance, my you heard it was like a double hit, right? Hands, feet are hitting. So everything is absorbing the impact. This person the kinetic energy. Yep. So guys, let's give it a shot. Down and back. Exhale when you come into contact with the ground. Right about this part for me is my body <sighs> exhales, nice. compresses the body. So the next thing that you're gonna do once you hit the ground is bring air back into you. Good, Damon, nice. Not bad, not bad. That was a good pop though. That's why we're doing this on mats. 
head. It's all in your head. Promise you, it's all in your head. All on your head. Tuck your chin. Yeah. It's a commitment. Yeah, you just gotta commit to it. Like most men, he's afraid to commit to the folks, but we're working on it. You got this. As long as you tuck your chin and, and jump, you're, you're literally this close to the ground. In your head. Not bad, not bad. Just keep working. Just, it's a matter of timing, okay? We're getting there. You just don't. You don't have to catch yourself. You'll find it. Nice, nice. Just turn your palms down. Tuck your chin, and you got it. You survived. Look at that. Okay. So look, it's looking like uh, two thirds of you are needing an extra time down and back before we, we add to this, okay? So one more time down and back. You got this, you got this, Jay? Good, that's getting there, you're getting there. All right, so palms down each time. You got it, you're getting it. Okay. Not bad, you're just coming out of it a little too early, that's all. Oh, I heard the feet help catch you. That's good. Got your feet involved that time. The next drill will make this actually easier. Good. This is crucial to get familiar with so that when you are involved in throws, not just getting thrown, but throwing someone, you can learn how to throw it without causing them harm when you're tra in training. You know which areas are going to impact instinctively from fighting yourself in that inverted and rolling position. Mm. That was straight up that Monkey King nice. style right there. That nice. nice. That was very nice. Look at that. Very good. Nice. 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 Good, good, yeah, Jay. Very, very nice. nice, that's improved. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to add just a little bit to this. <clears throat> we're going to go for the distance. Not worried about speed because we're getting thrown, getting thrown, getting thrown in a time of need. All right, so I just, some of you got the joke, some of you don't. Sorry. It's horrible. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to add some distance. So, we're going to try to reach towards our target and go up and over. So we're going to take like a step or two and dive and roll. Again, a step or two, dive and roll. The way I'm coming up from this is I'm landing just like I would if I were to do a shoulder roll. So if I'm starting with my left shoulder, I'm going to have my right knee up. So when I roll, I'm going to bring, switch to the right side. That way I'm able to work both left and right sides of the body. So I tuck one leg under, and I come up off of that bottom leg. All right? Go ahead. Did you get a couple down and back? <laughs> so all you're going to do is take a step. Good job. Roll. Step. Roll. Step. Roll. Step and roll. Did a lot of throwing last time. Yeah. <laughs> All right, see if you can get a light on it. See if you can get a light on it. Or the same height, that works. I'm going to go higher. Yeah, just a little bit. There it is. That's a full of human. Challenge yourself, yes. There it is. Nice. Good job, Jay. All right. We're getting dynamic now. All right, well, here, cut your mouth on so you don't get too busy. We're going to make it a challenge. Okay, so now we're just going to line. We're going to go through at least three times. And we're going to start with the shenai. You just have to get over it. 
and roll. Okay? And this is all in your head jig. Outstanding. That was about shoulder level. Uh, righteous. Righteous. You don't want to land on your elbow though like that. You can damage it. Exhale. Otherwise you'll beat the hell out of your lungs. Right on, Jay. That'll work. It's nice and smooth. Very good. Nice and smooth. <clears throat> Alright, so come on back. Same direction, same height. Two inch pop. That's it. <clears throat> nice. Very nice. Nice and smooth and easy. Good. I can do it. You can do it. Very good. Very good. All right. One more time with this hike. Probably gonna embarrass myself on national television or whatever, but we'll give this a shot. Well, it is, but you saw I had to go into a full break fall. Yeah, that's good. Not bad for an old man, huh? Yeah. An impact. That's all it takes. <clears throat> all right, so. We got some good warm ups, reviewed rolls. We understood some new stretching devices and techniques. So let's uh, go over our, our clinches for today. Okay, so we got three basic clinches. We're going to have one that's like a seatbelt hold, where we're, our head's going to be under an opponent's sh shoulder on a, to the side, controlling the far arm. We'll have one where we're going to be double under, so we work an opponent's hands up until they're like a gorilla or an orangutan and they can't punch you. Or we're going to think about utilizing the top of our helmet, getting behind an opponent putting the top of our head into the small of the lower lumbar back to try to control them. This drill, again, is designed to overcome some of the fear of getting struck. But you can learn to control or restrain somebody. Where you're most likely going to use this is not really on the field of battle. We're not going to use this when we tackle somebody in a fight. Not in combat, period. Sport, you might. Where you're most likely going to use this is if your buddy gets way too drunk and is starting some stuff, and you just don't want to hurt him, but you need to restrain him. Okay. Or you might be a drunk uncle at a wedding, you know, and you just don't want to do him that way. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? We could, but we don't want to do that. Yeah. Right? You know, it's got to keep it family, keep it playful. Yeah. If someone's got a, a, a grenade on them, we don't want a full guard. We don't want to clinch with that person. Yeah. Because <laughs> it just takes one pin pull. Yeah. All right. And they may have a weapon that we may, may not see, and they may have a buddy with them, all that sort of stuff. So what we're looking for right now is to close a distance. As soon as we close a the distance, then we'll start these three. So what we're going to practice is just slow hooks coming at you or jabs and Joe and I are going to throw them real smooth at you and what we're looking for is that you're going to tuck your chin not drop your head but tuck your chin bring your hands up to protect your face and in front of you 
So you see this right here. Chin is tucked, my eyes are forward. My shoulders are pulled up to protect my jaw. My fists are in close, my hands are touching my forehead. I can still see right through the middle here. My chin is completely covered. My eyes and nose are completely covered, okay? Can everybody see that pretty good? And what this is, is this is our, oh dear God, we're rolling into it and we're gonna swing, it, swing our bodies towards the opponent. So when this comes into play, uh, as he's swinging, I'm in here and I just wanna get to like feel my forearms up against his chest. This is when I know I've closed the distance. All right, so the first technique we're gonna learn from here is whatever foot is forward, in this case, my left foot, I'm going to drop that same shoulder underneath of his armpit. So I'm beside him now, okay? See this hand here? What's it doing, guys? Secure, uh... Protecting my face, because he's probably still gonna punch. And my goal here is, if I can, to reach around and hook under his armpit and over his elbow. And then I'm going to reach over and pull everything in. And this is, all, this is only half of it. The other half is, is I have to drive my weight towards his shoulder to take him off balance. Okay, it's a seat belt. All right, so I'm in here. Boom, I feel that contact. I'm coming in. See how my hand's still guarding? Switch to the bicep, hook, hook, drive the shoulder. Okay, it's not hard. I'm even doing up the acupuncture in here, right? So we're gonna start it slow, and we're just gonna open hand, just palm towards you so you can see where the shots come from. The most <laughs> entertaining aspect of this drill is two things are gonna happen when a large class is about to commence the clinch drill on an army base. One is the instructors put out a call for all level two guys and up to come out and help punch because punching consistently 40 dudes through this three times a piece is 120 people and you get exhausted. However, if you bring in all the guys that like to hit the juniors, they come out with their gloves, the MMA rash guards, Steve guards, just like, woohoo! And you get a line of people out the door wanting to punch privates in the face. It's great. But two is I guarantee you're always gonna have that guy that forgets to keep his chin in and eyes up that comes in like Superman. And he is going to be the first to get the super uppercut and knock the F out. All right, like Friday, you got no job. Damn, Smokey got knocked out, oh, right? Happens every time. But it's not gonna happen to you guys, because we're telling you, that's what one guy is gonna always do. Usually it takes a class size of about 30, and you get one or two of them every single time. You would think the first time you get a solid uppercut to your face, it would tell you not to put your head down again, right? Again, what's really entertaining about it is there's very so often that one guy who, well, it's a little slower than others with getting the basics across. So with this in mind, uh, Joe's ready to just, just to slowly put the punches on. So we'll just line up um, and starting through Dan. So the distance you're gonna start is about where you guys are right now. So you're gonna touch hands and double arm length, and then you're gonna take an extra step back. There you go. And now you got that in clinch close. All you're gonna do is it doesn't matter which side you get to, but see if you can get to the seat belt, okay? Nice and easy, whenever you're ready. Good, and that's a clinch. That's all there is to it. Good, and then you just release, and then roll it back to the end of the line. We'll do it. We're gonna do this a bunch of times. Uh, I didn't do that right. You got it in there. Touch. All right. Okay. Now think about where your head should be. Should be on this side. Yeah, inside the body. There we go. And then this end is protecting this one here. Sorry, guys. Yeah. And then they're working together. Yeah. This is gonna come inside. Do you feel like, yeah, you feel like control there? Right. Yeah. So that it's from here, it's just, just drive. Like go under, or uh, you want to pull, pull his belt towards your, your chest and just push your shoulder forward. Well, there you go. That's it. Just okay. enough to disrupt the, his center of gravity. Okay. Hey, head on the inside, head on the inside. Because if you, if you reach back like that, I can really snatch your neck real tight. Right. So, so this hand swim underneath my armpit, and then grab right, and then see how, see how, just just feel how, feel how secure you are here. Yeah. 
this is this is our checkpoint, our safety point. And then from here, you can hand on the inside. The elbow is what right, Joe's right, describing right, right now. We want to get here so first. that hand, go under the arm. They're going to try to hit you. Just stay close here. So when you so catch can, that, that around their body and you come so you under and over, okay. that yeah, arm gets so trapped I'm, I'm and stuck right here. And the so second hand just re-secures it so that the person is not able to spin out as easily. You got me. You got me right there. So when we come in, it's just a step, one, you know, I'm coming in or whatever here, mm -hmm. and then I'm looking to put my head on the chest, arm around the corner, and then get to here. So it's just a one, two, three. So slow down, I know, because we got the gloves on, it gets more intense and we have it up, but nice and easy. So look at that, look at this. Watch, come in, keep stepping. Right the chest. See, there's like four steps right there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> just yeah. once, just. Okay. One. Okay, now where are you going to go from here? Two. And then, right, you secure the position, you're in your seat, you check one, and we're there. Three. One, two, three. Okay. Let's try again. Yeah, that's what we're going through. Just rolling it through our minds. Yeah, we're going to get a lot of practice on these three. No worries. Once you get this clinch, uh, just for the safety of the puncher, they don't let you pick them up off the ground or slam them. Right. So don't try to lift me. Catch a key my detail. Hips. Okay. Get your hips help. close to your hips opponent's touching. hips. As soon as your oh, hips touch, yeah. you lose. <laughs> the yeah. opponent loses their center balance. The hips got to be on my hips. Okay. Yeah. Feel how that feels. Hey, Jay. Jay, so let's come at him from this line so you guys can see it on the camera better too, okay? So we'll just roll straight through this way. Because we got the we got the back side, this will help show the front side for your review. Around this way, I can hit you with the behind this stuff. You can hit you with all kinds of stuff too. Around, hit you with the Yeah, absolutely. But if your hips aren't close to mine, you have to make up for that with muscle. Yeah. If your hips are touching mine, you just gotta. Yeah, it's technique. Yeah, it's technique. I'm on the side of that camera angle. Is there, is there, <laughs> so there a place in that, in that idea of that sweep that I just did where I lose my balance in that view? It depends. You, if you're coming lower than, you're coming up from underneath of your opponent, so it's very difficult for them to take your balance. Straight spine, too. Straight spine is going to save you from, from, from headlocks or whatever. Look up towards the sky, Jay. Look up towards the sky. Uh -huh. A straight, straight spine, man, is strong. <laughs> And Damon, come on in from uh, this angle so that you'll be able to see yourself from two sides. Okay. Yeah, we're just rolling the line from here now. Straighten the spine, hip to hip. So what I'm saying is if your spine isn't straight, see that, see that? Now watch, look at the sky. <laughs> Feel the difference in the power? Yeah. Woo! That straight spine. Oops. 
towards Bree. Look up to the sky. Feel the difference of that? Now look up down, like put your head down lower. Feel the difference of that? Look up to the sky. Look at how your straight spine. Yeah. Feel the difference of that power? Going again? Yep. One more time each, and then we'll go to the second one. Hopefully you guys are paying attention to these tips. You don't get these in normal modern army combatives programs classes because 95% yeah, of the folks that go no, through that don't roll yes. never get I this like knowledge. That at all. Because <laughs> it's messing with my balance. I don't like that. Bam. 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 I don't like yeah, I don't like it. You feel too strong. You feel like another hundred pounds stronger. Yeah, it's right. yeah. This arm is secure. I can't punch you with this. Sure, it's that. Can't really hit like, like yeah. it's, you see how strong it is. Yeah. A safe. This is a safe clinch, mm -hmm. right? Like, what can I do from that position? Come here, take. So as I throw this, oh, here, yep, yeah, here, hold, oh, hold, oh. lock it up here. Okay, I can't knee him in the groin. I can't really attack him with this arm. I can't headlock. But if I overcommit to this, he could just take the back. Um, so, yeah, that's so that's why that posture is important. And that's actually what we're about to show now. Okay, exactly. All right, so, so nice segue. As we get our distance and unclose the distance, right? We'll say for some reason, instead of getting my head into his chest, I have my head under his arm. Uh -huh. So as he's throwing his swings, like boom, I'm like, whoa, I totally missed. But my hands are coming around to the waist, my opposing thumb grips. So my one thumb's up, one thumb's down grabbing with my fingers and I close that in and I'm gonna have that around his waist all right and the big difference off of that is I'm gonna put the top of my head the small of his back and drive drive it forward so the, the big difference between this and the other clinch is his hips are further away when we when we clinch from the front our hips are touching when we're in the back our hips are further away so we can't get elbowed in the head you know what I mean and we're using that S grip. It's like kind of like an S, because maybe the guy's extra fluffy, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that gives us maybe a couple extra inches with that to, to make up for that fluffiness of him. <laughs> Which is the yeah. comedian. Oh yeah, fluffy. Mr. Fluffy. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay, so we'll walk through this line. Uh, we'll, we can start this angle. We'll switch the side angle in a bit. Okay. So you're entering the same way. Just now you're going to duck under the arm, and from here. Closing thumb grips. Now you want the top of your head. The top of your head. Crown of the head. Okay, not the forehead. The very top. A little bit more. There. So you're going to drive your head forward. Pull those hands back. And keep your base. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it could be either way. You can well, go this way. You can go that way. Because you can actually Question wise, the grip. You can go this you way. Can, you, know, you can go that way. Come here. So as I as I come underneath, no no, as I come as I come underneath, and I get to the back here, I'm here like this, but I'm away. So if you try to elbow me, you can't elbow me. But then if I want, I can take you down yeah, to the ground. Okay. So that, that's the position, right? Here. Here, I can't elbow you. You're connected to mm -hmm. me, this sucks, and your hips are further away, making that square, right? Mm -hmm. okay, yeah. Another tip to know if your hips aren't too far away, okay? If Joe keeps his hips close to me while he's trying to get here, is I, I'll be able to hit his legs. Yeah. And, I, and that's a pain in the butt, because I mean, I will beat the hell out of the thighs. So as soon as his hips are back, I got nothing. But then that squeeze, especially if you're wearing a helmet, locks up the spine. You got nothing. Yeah. Okay. 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 So if you're like, oh, oh my legs, oh. get back, get back. Like this. Way. Mm -hmm. Stagger a foot and drive the top, the very top of your head into the spine. Right, 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 right. You feel that? Yeah, yeah. And you see those elbows? Right, right. Good. One time yeah, we'll change angles. Yeah, we'll go ahead and change angles. Yeah. Hopefully my hair isn't getting all this damage. Why do you think I'm balding? <laughs> I'm trying to hold on. Right, to the forehead, top of the head, drive the spine. There it is. See, if we're using the very top of your head, 
with your hips back allows you to do what to your spine? Straighten, straighten it. Joe just showed you if you're vertical and you straighten it, how much stronger it is. It's no different than if you're just kind of hunched over like this. You can push a little bit, straighten that the spine, and get the top of your head into it. Okay. It's gonna be a lot stronger. Kind of like that T shape, right? Like a T. Yeah. Hey man, when you get older, you gotta use better technique. Yeah. <laughs> that's, the truth. that's the truth. Boom. See how natural that was? You just like slid he, under. Yeah, because the punch just slid off those forearms. That's that's your lifeline. Here, boom. Good. Nice, nice. Good. Don't hold your breath though. Yeah. <laughs> just, you, you just take one. Uh, uh, <laughs> at the end, just kind of like give away. Yeah. Too many steps. Go Should be one step around. Yeah. Doing too much work. Smooth. Yeah. Let it flow. Yeah. Two more. Three. One. Two. And then we're three. Yeah. Nice. Just slow it down. Slow it down so you can feel what's happening. Mm -hmm. Feel the connection. Connected here. Connected back here. Straight spine. Now you're safe, right? Don't, don't you feel safe right here? Yeah. That's where you want to get to. And you can drive a person forward. So say if by chance There's no there is a firefighter in our midst and they respond to the scene and the person's just panicked. The building is starting to burn. You need to get them out of the room. You're not supposed to hurt somebody. This is a good way to control them. So, so if you're throwing the punch, so when I come in, I throw the punch. I'm going to go here and I might come around like right here. Good job. But it's just gonna like it'll loop me around. My momentum will carry me to the back because we're both kind of coming together. Okay. <laughs> ah. oh, that's Actually, yeah, that's the candidus or the fungus in your brain that's used to eating sugar. Yeah. So, yeah. Some nourishment, nourishment. So, so sometimes I just frame with one hand, mm -hmm. and then the other hand's like a hook. So well, that's that's a key word there, Joe. You use, you guys heard that the word frame. What does that mean, Joe? So um, a frame is a nice it's a it's a connection of my bones, my bone structure. When this connects here, so look, at, I'm like a little triangle. So if you punch me, it's gonna slide off to one side or the other. Like, and what, as I step in, boom, I'm stepping in one, and then I come two. Good. So my hand kind of like catches the body weight, springs me around to the back. Boom, two. Do you see all that? So. Ah, so let's switch hands. And then, so just take a step with the one, like, like we're jousting, remember? So if that left leg's forward, so just take a step with that one. One step, boom. Now this hand just kind of catches my body. Two, keep going. Three, four, boom. Feel that momentum, do that again, one. Just like that, okay? No, no rush, no, no, get closer. Okay. So watch, just feel the momentum, go. Boom. One, two, three, four, and we're there. See it? Oh, that's, yeah. Good, you're good there. Top of the head, on your forehead. Three Top of the head. Three Rewind. Three Yeah. Three here. Three here. Yeah. Let's just go step by step. So this is your lead round, right? Sweet. Take a step. One. Hook. Two. Three. Four. And you're there. There you go. Catch. Reach up higher. Rewind. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. One more time, just one more time. Okay, here. You got it, you got it, you got it. Think it through. Take it out. One, two, three, and we're there. Yep. Nice. Better. Well, right. So you see the concept isn't practice till you get it right, it's practice till you can't get it wrong. <laughs> so you're like, what, do it again? And Joe's like, no, you did it right, yeah. do it right again. Yeah. Practice till you can't get it we're wrong. Just, all this, so we're making it more efficient. So yeah. it was efficient, now it's more efficient. So it was right, and now it's even more right. Yeah. One. Three. 
three, take a step. One, two, three, and we're there. Can you, can you feel the flow? Yeah. The, the reality of the situation? There it is. Good. Good job. Feel the flow. So you can see what the truth looks like, right? One, two, three. Oh, Try that again. Try that again. A little, a little too Try much, huh? Yeah. Make sure you take one. There you go. Nice. Not your face, top of your head. I'm trying, like, like I'm trying to get that distance. A little stretcher, stretcher grass. Dude, these are, hey, these are like a rubber band. Oh, okay. Yeah, see, yeah, see that rubber band? Yeah, there, there we go. go. There, it is. Oh. there it is, right? So, so it doesn't a little, have to little be bit too rigid. You can be here and still hold it tight. Right. So you can open it a little. Okay, so now let's look at the third and final for this test. This is if we're coming in head off strong. And instead of getting a hip around their opponent, let's say I try to, but he, he cuts the angle. He just pivots off his back foot. So once I close this distance, I mean, I'm like, aha, uh -huh, and I'm trying to get around. See how he's turning? I can't get around him. If I go the other way, I can't get around him. So what I'm going to do is my hands are going to come underneath. I'm going to put my face next to him. And I'm going to literally pinch my arms up, using the closing S grip, keeping my face in close. And drive him forward. Now you can try to punch him. You gotta get his elbows up high enough and clinch. Face right up against your opponent's chest with a little bit of a lean. That S grip again, and you just kind of inch, inch, inch until you try to get those arms up. So this is double underhooks. You have to come under both arms. And you saw that how easy it was if I'm trying to get behind jump for him to just angle and angle and angle. So I just go under both. It's a strong position, double under. Well, you, just, you, cl you close in, yeah. and you, now I'm giving a reason that I would use this. Is if I try to get under or behind, they just simply change their, their angle. So it just allows me to close straight in. You can, if you're comfortable, just go straight in like this. You don't have to have an opponent try to turn on you, okay? Yeah. I'm just giving you the reality behind it. Just like once we're going for the seat belt here, and I miss it, and Joe swings over, oh sh shoot, I better get to this one then, right? Mm -hmm. One or the other will flow, so you always have a clinch that you can transition to. If I go and I get behind him, and before I can set this, he turns any which way he wants to come and hit me, boom, I have to go straight. Okay? So you can go back and forth at any of them. Okay. Which is good. Because they're all going to work together, like, you know, as you're playing around, seeing what this guy's doing. And it's going to be facing him, chest up. Let's see how I'm pivoting. Look what I'm giving you. Just putting this one underneath. Under both. There you right. go. Right. And then just keep inching your way up. Right. That's what and we're looking for. You see what I'm saying? Like you were there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we, we have we work too much. We do too much. Yeah, I was thinking too much. <laughs> the, the bad guy, the, the enemy has a responsibility too to do his part. So don't interrupt him when he's making a mistake. That's, that's just polite manners, folks. Don't interrupt your opponent when they're making a mistake, okay? <laughs> Don't be rude. You know, that's right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Come on. So look, I just pivoted towards the right. And then just Side. Put your ear. Your ear, not your chin. Your ear. Yeah, there you chin. go. Yeah. Just keep inching. Turning your face sideways takes about three inches out of that distance where he might be able to angle and hit ear, you. Ear on the chest. So you just get your ear in the chest and it's as close as you can get. If I push my face out, it gives him distance. Yeah, that's right. mm -hmm. yeah. Plus you can breathe. <laughs> it's safer. So uh, basically what I do is I turn their chest into a pillow for myself. Okay. That's, that's the idea. Cause man, cause the guy might be like, you know, 75 pounds heavier than me. And how much power is he gonna have when my head is on his chest? Not too much. But I got a lot of control. I can dip him. I can drop him. I can throw him. So. Underneath. 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 Both. Both arms. There we go. Put your ear on his chest. There it is. Now I'll walk my arms up. Just your elbows. Squeeze in. Squeeze in. Get your face. Because they can head by you. Mm -hmm. yeah, That's about all you can do. It's not very effective, is it? Angle your elbows up. Now I got nothing. 
Nothing at all. Do you see the difference? Yeah. Okay. Now, we saw why I told him ear against my chest. What did I do with my head? Bam! Guarantee you I can knock a person out with my head by it. Yes. You go through bricks with this thing. Right? On the ground, in the guard, I'm yeah. always putting the head Bam! close because of that, that danger to reality. Plus, they could bite me. It's that connection, yeah. Good. So this is an S group as well? Yes. Okay. Oh. Breathe. Keep inching your way out here. And what about this group here? Yeah, you can use this. Whatever grip strong is for you. You know what I mean? That's it. Or table grip. You can use Yeah. Yeah, it's just sometimes people are a lot bigger, so the aspect gives you a lot, like gives you a little bit more of that rubber band effect because, like Jay knows with me, I'm a bigger guy, mm -hmm. so sometimes it's a little bit easier for you to work. Just connect, connect, and just kind of spider walk your way up. Yeah. Okay. If you just try to muscle yourself up, it's not going to work. But if you can just, like, you know, inch it up, you got it. Okay. Notice how I threw several punches before he came in, so you came forward and you stopped. So you were right in my sweet spot. Tonight. Well, okay. So remember, so remember later, we talked about we have the green zone is here, right, right, you're on the green zone, and the red zone. So you stop right in the red zone. But yeah, we got. I'm highly motivated to get the green zone. Yeah. Right. Because this right. guy's you're a lot bigger than greens that can't hit you, right? As soon as you're within my picking, yeah, get out the red zone. range, you're in the red zone. Yeah. So you're up against me, you're back in the green zone, okay? So you're in green right now, he's in green, and the, the middle of the red. That's red. Oh, oh. See how you're staying in the distance? Yeah. Uh, there we go. I want to feel that. And the reason I'm motivated to get in the green is because I know how dangerous that red zone is. So, so I'm I'm committed to close the gap. I'm committed to get like a hold of this stuff because I I realize what he can do. Right. Right. Yep. Need that contact. The more you just kind of straighten your spine out, the worse it is for the guy. Especially if he's shorter than you. Because when you're standing tall, you just, you know, just being who you are, you're gonna just you're gonna make his posture really bad. See, is that good now? Yeah. The uppercut, wait to happen. Drive drive your skull into my jaw. Yeah, that's good. That's just comfortable for your opponent. Jay, and I can't get Jay, you the remember to frame. Uh, yeah, right. okay, get that frame. Right. Uh, also, look like, like, like a taller than you are. So if I come in here and I put this on your, underneath your chin, you know it's stuck to me? Yeah. Trying yeah. using the top of the head, okay. the jaw and chin, just driving just this part of your head. Just, very painful, very you effective. Easy to do from this yeah. position, chest right. out. Keep throwing punches. Just, just, just show that the technique works. Like, I don't like this. Right. Like, you, you need to be comfortable. Like, and if you're comfortable, because I'm not, you're just going into a clinch. Like, if you're comfortable, you're right. always be comfortable. Let, let them be uncomfortable. Yeah. Just put that thing in and just straighten your back out and just be all comfy and let that person be in misery. Okay. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You need to be comfortable. That's the stuff. So once you know where you're comfortable, yeah. and that, I'm going to go, that's where you want to keep. Yeah. So you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you try to hit me, you get back down. This is your home. Yeah. I'm not here for a while. It's totally it's like, I'm like, uh, uh, I'm like, 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 uh, I'm like
Big difference, right? Yes. Yeah. Black black versus pink. 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 That's why you have That's the same. Okay. Okay. Right. 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 You have to close the distance. I'll take the red below. There you go. If I get a hold of this. Hey, where are you? Five and below. I'm not going to do I'll take the five and below. There you go. I can hold them. I can drop them. I can choke them. I can spray them. Good job. Good job. And the big thing, too, is when you have your frames on, when you have them away from your head, you need to stay in your yeah, by your own so, so connect them, be solid, wherever the thing is connected to, your, to bone, bone to bone. Okay. Bone to bone. Bone to bone. You can go up here and hurt. Both of us, we're supposed to come to the bone to bone. Okay. What I do is I need to see how it goes. Right. There you go. Good job. Bone to bone. Bone to bone. Bone to bone. Bone to bone. Taster's choice, but not instant green. Coffee. But still just as satisfying in the morning. Your choice, any of those three clenches, wherever you find yourself. I'm not going to hit you any harder. I'm not going to hit you any faster. The only thing I'm going to do is you felt the last time when you're in position at a turn. That's all I'm going to do. I'll do, I'll pivot before you close, and I'll try to turn after. But it doesn't change anything. You know all three of these things, right? So any of these three, as long as before you get that clench, you frame, get that solid defense when you're crossing the threshold of the red zone, right? Green, red, green. Okay? You stand up, don't do this all day. Squeeze with your hands. Yeah, good stuff. That's how you get even with the striker. Mm -hmm. Now, which technique did I catch you with? Right on the nose. Uppercut, right? Yes. Is he framed? But you see a huge space there? Yeah. Bring those elbows in, remember? <laughs> ah, look, and when I'm close here, I can still see you. Yeah. Look, okay. I can still see you. Okay. Can you see what I'm saying? But I'm protected. Check out my phone. Check it. Oh. I protect it from, you know, right. So you had the frame real good up here. It just, I had to show you where the opening was. Because you're going down, and you're closing in, but it's right there. You might as well be doing this. If your elbows are in, you're not getting that uppercut. So that's just and you're validating head, where you're at. Your head up, because guess what? The guy's still going to be there. You know, my left hand wasn't. I don't think No, watch your frame. Just keep the solid frame when you move in. I'm a sucker. <laughs> It's okay to get hit. Yeah, you get, yeah, just take a five and below. Just take a five and below. Yeah, I'm not trying to kill you guys out here. It's five okay to get hit. Good. <laughs> Nicely done. Good seatbelt. Right, right, Good right. clinch. Right. We're going to get hit on the way in, but, it, uh, but it's not going to be a knockout. Yeah. Especially if you have a good frame. Yeah. But if you're out here playing this game, you might get knocked out. So just come in with a solid frame to cross out. Yeah. I just hold those up all the way. Like, yeah. like, I'm just coming in with the gas. I know that. I, I'm so uh, here. Close the gas. Close the gas. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Oh, yeah. 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 There, there you go. 
Yeah. 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 There you go. There you go. Yeah, legs. There you go. Spacing. Legs. It's back. It's back. Spacing. Good punch. Uh, you got it. Way to work around. Way to move it through. Good. One more? I'm not going to be down for a while. Once you throw that punch in, I'm going to be in. I'm 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 in. i am in i am in i am in i am just like that, concentrating more on securing the arm. The arm? Whatever sticks. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. So, one with each of them. Anything else? Right. Just everybody type the last time through, okay? Okay. All right. Joe's allowed to angle. Probably do about 50% of his power. He's allowed to try to cut and pivot. It won't be 50%. <laughs> it's but it can. Yep. There we go. Ready to close. Good, and that's a clinch. Nicely done. Ooh, rhinoceros style. The headbutt to the ribs. It was intent on getting that clinch, though. That's the money right there. Then screw again. Headbutt sunk it in everything. Good job. <laughs> a little too far. Yeah, you went too far. Put the control. There you go. I think about where you're at. Alright. Take it down. Oh, sorry. Position. Elbows up. Elbows higher. Elbows higher. Draw the head into the jaw. And there oh, it is. Yeah, good job. There we go. Right, guys. Right there. Good job. Uh, okay. So let's get to some uh, light free crackle. Let's brush off our skills. Saturday, might get some one, right? Sure. Yeah. All right. Good job, guys. Get some water first. <laughs> so to recap, we went to rolls. We touched on the, the, the correct body, uh, body posture and position to transfer your weight while shrimping. We did some dynamic stuff. You got to see a full yukime done about what was it, about this high, about that something, right around here. But it came through, and I didn't even bother to roll. I just broke fall. Bam! Hit the ground so hard it bounced me back onto my feet. All right. Just because I'm showing you, it can be done. Aside from stretching, I didn't really warm up much, did I? No, oh, just took it and go. And we all know white men can't jump. So I have to get over there. <laughs> so stay fluid, stay smooth with the rolls. Practice them until you get comfortable. Not practice until you get it right, but practice till you're getting it right. Because you don't get it wrong. You can't get it wrong, right? Yeah. And we also found in the clinch drills, aside from reviewing what the frame is, we have our seat belt grip. We have our back from behind, we have our double unders. We understood the S grip, we understood that that gives us a distance that we can close based upon the, the girth of whoever we're grabbing hold of, right? We realized a straight spine while driving forward makes it harder to get caught in the headlock, allows you to shift your weight, and you can use the top of the head rather than grinding the jaw. You can do that for almost anywhere, especially from within someone's guard. It's a lot of fun. We also covered the basics of moving. You may not have realized it, but once we started going from the static punch, close the distance, static punch, the first time you came with me, I pivot. Ooh. I'm changing my angle. You worked with changing your angles to keep up with me. You worked on managing your distance because some of you got stuck in the red zone. You got the green, the red, the deadly area, and green. So he who manages the distance manages the 
Damage. Damage, that's right. So you learned to manage your distance. You worked your angle, you worked your elevation to come under and raise up. So if you're able to control your range, your angle of attack, and your elevation, right? Your distance, range being distance, your elevation and angle. You're mastering all three principles that need to be applied to make a martial art alive. Now the only thing that really makes anything you do live is adding those that concept in what we call energy, motion, and timing, EMT. If you're having a heart attack, an EMT like myself can come in and fix you up, right? Energy, motion, and timing is what we practice in the clinch drill. So we're putting some force into it, we're moving. I know we're not going balls to the wall, but we're just putting out there, get popped a little bit, putting some energy to it. You're coming in with your body with energy, motion, after we did our static drill, static drill, we moved. We found out you may be in a different position based upon that movement. And when you are putting energy and motion together, you develop naturally a sense of timing. Timing is what makes everything work in, the, in a fight or in life, really. Okay, some point coming forward, Damon. I'll show you an ancient Shaolin method of timing. All right? Deep horse stance. You gotta get down with this, right? Spine straight. Focus your hands. Palms down. <laughs> there you go. So then, timing. Nice. Okay. It's a childlike way to explain it, but that's what makes it work. And we know motion gets in there because then you always are the guys that when you're in there, they're like, woo, with their finger, they're like, ah, and they get that free hit anyway. Energy, motion, and timing, and then once you have that, become devious. If you're fighting fair in a fight, your tactics suck so cheat in the fight that's called winning your safety your family's safety or whomever you're defending you don't want to leave anything on the table that you could have used to help to get an advantage but the principles will always be the same other than that we're just gonna get some free roll so i'm gonna go ahead and kill the camera feed from there if you got questions hit us up as usual tapping won't save you.com joe and i twin dragons of the academy in the school here finally thanks to uh Sean Stupman and the Silverback Academy under Chantilly, where IBGJF certified, no longer gypsy belts, woohoo! So, Joe here will be going hard, reconnecting in with his Gracie lines, and I'll be going hard to pick up this brown here soon. So with that, I'm Utah Fall, you guys be safe, keep it real, keep it playful, have fun, and study. Practice till you can't get it wrong.